Welcome to the sixth round of the European Truck Racing Championship in the Czech Republic. Autodrom Most is located at the foot of Mount Nevin at around an hour's drive from the capital Prague. The racetrack with a length of 4.212 kilometers was built in 1983. Over the years, the Czech Truck Prix has turned into one of the most important motorsport events in the region. The drivers were given a big reception on Friday evening by locals and fans. The town of Most invites everyone to the truck parade and an autograph signing session. In the next few days, three Czech drivers who are taking part, Frankie Wojciech, Adam Latsko and Jerry Foreman, will be cheered on by their fans. As such, they will be signing lots of autographs. This is just amazing. I mean, I, I would like to say a big thank you to all the people who comes, you know, to, to, to the city and then just, you know, they, they show the old supper to us, so it's, it's just very nice. But for one of the three local heroes, it is questionable whether he will even compete in his home race. Let's have a recap of what happened at the Hungara ring. It was the final corner of the last lap. Frankie Wojciech was in second place, and then Norbert Kish ran into Wojciech, causing him to crash into the wall. The Czech driver emerged from the accident shaken, with his truck badly damaged and emotions running high. Since then, the crew has been working day and night to repair the MAN truck. The entire ETRC paddock helped the Czech truck racing team. This is Frankie's Heim Grand Prix, so we have to stand together. We have, have to help everybody. I mean, the Lulich, uh, the, the Reinhardt boys, the Hahn boys, us, everybody helped with parts and knowledge. And we have to get the thing on the circuit again. And the rest, what the drivers do there, is up to them. Wojciech's truck newly rebuilt and race ready, thanks to a lot of collaboration, waits in the team tent. But all the work towards the race in the Czech Republic has unfortunately been in vain. He sustained an injury in the accident. There is no way he can compete. But is this moment is no good, no good, and uh, come back to hospital and big big hematoma and not not chance to working and and this truck is okay and thank you very much for everybody. But to too much helping and then another teams and my my teams and uh, many many people and most and Litvinov and many people to, to, help, to help me for my team. Thank you so much for everybody. Now it is up to the Bagheera drivers, Adam Latsko and Yeri Foreman to represent the Czech Republic on the track. And for Latsko, it's about nothing less than the fight for the championship. After the weekend in Hungary, Latsko remains 13 points behind Hahn. However, for him, that is anything but an unlucky number. My lucky number is 13 everywhere. I like it. I live also in a house with number 13. We get together with my wife on the 13 and everything. It's, I like number 13. However, Jochen Hahn is not affected by such superstitions. The championship leader is instead thinking more about the weather conditions. Yeah, everybody knows he's very fast in rain condition or in bad condition. Um, but anyway, in most we have also good races in bad conditions and most, you know, I, I know it with, uh, with closed eyes, I know every corner. I think, okay, he will go fast in bed, but we will, we will go also fast when, when it's raining. In third place in the championship, Norbert Kish is in a good position to pounce on any mistakes, but Hahn and Latsko are already a long way in the lead. We will try to improve for sure and the goal is nice to maybe try and uh, catch the third position in the championship, but I know that it will be very, very hard, but we will try. René Reiner first lost his spot in third place in the championship when he missed out entirely in the last round. But there are still four events left for the logistics entrepreneur to scramble his way back up the table. We also needed a bit of luck. Um, and for me, yeah, I think it's a little bit uh, faster than the last years. Um, Every year um, I'm a little bit better, small steps. So if I can back, have it back to the third place, I don't know. Um, it also depends on the other drivers. I will give my best.
The first real showdown on the track will be defined by these two protagonists. In the fight for pole position, Jochen Hahn prevails, beating Adam Latsko by just 13.9 hundredths of a second. Ah, it is what, what I say before, so we are very close here and it's a home circuit from Adam. Yeah, I'm happy, I'm on Tendl before him and it's a good basic for the race. So now we will see the race. The important point is the first chicken. I hope behind us everybody go cool. And then I think Adam and me, we can make the pace. Hahn starts in pole position, but alongside him, Latsko will try everything to challenge this position from the start of race one on his home track. So much people come uh, because we are racing here. We are Czech team, we are in Czech Republic, and this I like it. Norbert Kirsch starts in third position with Stephanie Halm alongside. Anthony Janek and Get Kurba head off from the third row. At the end of the formation lap, it's all clear for takeoff. Hahn and Latsko keep pace with each other, and Hahn accelerates down towards turn one, just in the lead. There's chaos in the first chicane. Janek makes contact with Gert Korbert, who ends up facing the wrong way. Janek goes through the gravel, and Shane Britton also makes an evasive manoeuvre. Janik rejoins without having moved up any positions. The race leaders, though, provide plenty of action. Everything points towards a tense duel between Hahn and Latsko, but the race is neutralised. No overtaking on the whole track until Kurba's truck has been recovered. Racing recommences. At first, Hahn escapes a little, but the freight liner of Adam Latsko closes the gap just one lap later. The duel between Hahn and Latsko is becoming tense. The Czech keeps on attacking, but Hahn leaves him no way of getting past. Right now, these two fighting bulls are in a league of their own, pulling away from the rest of the field. Norbert Kirsch crosses the pit lane line again. He receives a drive-through penalty for this and drops to last place in the classification. In the penultimate lap, Latsko pulls out to attack the leader but Hahn puts a stop to it. A few metres further on, the Freightliner driver has another chance. Hahn leaves the door open, but before Latsko can use the opportunity, the gap is closed again. Behind the duo, there's nothing but empty space. But then the positions become clear. Steffi Halm is in third place, Jeanne is fourth, Reinert is fifth, and Yeri Foreman runs sixth. It's the final lap, and Latsko starts an attack on Hahn on the straight. At the chicane, he appears in the MAN driver's mirrors, but yet again fails to get past. There's a lot of smoke coming from the rear of Hahn's truck, and the wheel arches are rubbing against the tyres. The MAN driver is definitely having difficulty defending himself from Latsko's attacks. The local hero comes out of the final corner better than Hahn. He comes up alongside him. Both accelerate towards the finish line, and the race ends with a photo finish. In the last few metres, Latsko manages to gain victory. His lead is a mere eight hundredths of a second, the blink of an eye. Steffi Halm joins them on the podium. Hahn doesn't exactly look pleased as the champagne bottles are emptied. Jochen is a little bit slow through the corner, but he has really good exit. I thinking all the race where I try past him and I try from the outside in the last two corners because there is only one possibility when it's possible. Here is the final classification. A win for Adam Latsko ahead of Jochen Hahn and then in third place, Steffi Halm. Just like at the Hungara Ring a week ago, Lent starts in pole position for the second race. Ryan Smith is alongside him, optimistic he could gain his first win. We have had uh, problem after problem with valves, uh, water, you know, we have big problems and I, I think you can tell that we are off the pace uh, and the brakes keep trying to lock up and things, but 
you know, I'm just going to get my head down and do the best job that I can, uh, not complain. I will have no excuses at the end of the race. I will give my best performance what, I'm, what, what it allows me to do. Yeri Foreman and Rene Reinert start on the second row. On row three, Anthony Janek and Steffi Halm. The next row is the one to watch. Title contenders Jochen Hahn and Adam Latsko are right next to each other again. The race starts and Sasha Lentz stays in the lead. Anthony Janek crosses the white line. That means yet another penalty. In the first corner, Lentz is still out in front. Andre Kurzim and Gert Korba tangle. Reiner collides with both Bagheera drivers and Janik. Hahn comes under pressure. Side by side with Kish, he runs out wide. Foreman uses the gap to get past, but then makes a braking error. The door is left wide open for Janek, who comes alongside Hahn. Neck and neck, they steer into the next corner. Adam Latsko exploits the situation to get away from Hahn and move up to fifth place. By the end of the first lap, Lentz is still in the lead. Smith is in second, followed by Reinert, Halm and Latsko. Hahn is having trouble keeping pace. Gert Korber is already on the side of the track, with one shock absorber having sustained damage in the collision at the start. Smith first tries to attack Lentz at the end of the second lap, but the 29-year-old German is able to stand up to the Brit. And what about Hahn? He is going for Foreman in the fight for seventh place. But back at the front, Smith is trying to take the lead on the inside. He moves in front, but then runs out too wide on exiting the chicane, putting his rear wheels into the gravel. Lent starts a counter-attack, regaining his position metre by metre. Reinert also does well out of the situation and begins to threaten Smith. Lentz, Smith, Reinert, Halm and Latsko complete the subsequent laps like pearls on a string. Kish and Hahn are still somewhat far behind but are approaching gradually. Lentz makes an error on the sixth lap. This time it's enough for Smith to take over the lead. Lentz has lost his rhythm. Reinert and Halm both pass the towing company owner. Latsko also forces his way past and moves into fourth place. Hahn overtakes the Hungarian Kish's Mercedes Benz and now begins his own attack on Lentz. Before the end of the lap, experience beats youth. Lentz has to accept defeat at the hands of Hahn. The new race order looks like this. Smith, Reinert, Halm, Latsko, Hahn and Lentz, with Kish lurking behind. In the final lap showdown, Reinert has made up ground between himself and Smith and attacks the Brit, meaning the two swap paintwork. Smith falters. Reinert uses the chance to pass him and to take the lead. Behind them, Halm and Latsko are battling it out. The racing lady retains the upper hand despite large amounts of smoke and the grinding of plastic. Smith and Reinert are neck and neck on the home straight of the final lap and another photo finish. Smith crosses the line just a nose length ahead of Reinert. This is the Brits' first overall victory in the championship. So he made a, a mistake um, and I tried to overtake him. Um, yeah, we hit a little bit each other. He was a little bit out, I could overtake him. Then I was in, in the front and I thought maybe uh, I had not a, a good feeling. Maybe I thought it was a little bit unfair and so I let him pass short before uh, um, yeah, the end of the race, and uh, I think he de de deserved the, the first place. Steffi Halm in third place and Rene Reinert give the first time winner the customary champagne shower. Smith happily lets them spray him. For the British driver, it's an overdue win. Rene showed 
what a great man that he is and he was very correct from this side. He drove very fairly and I have big respect for Rene. And all through the fight, we had big fight early on, cab to cab, touching, but nice touching, not hard contact, not dangerous contact, racing contact. And you know, I am proud to be in this race and to win it is an honor. Here are the results. Smith, Reinert and Halm all gain good podium positions. Behind them in fourth place, Adam Latsko nibbles one important point off Harm's championship lead. The latter crosses the finishing line in fifth, followed by Kish, Foreman and Lentz. After race day one in Most, only seven points of Harm's 13-point lead remains. Another lucky number, by the way. A new dawn, a new day, and some new luck. The fans flock again to the Most Autodrome in droves. There is a lot to experience. The open paddock offers an insight into the work of the teams in the ETRC fan village. The fans can get up close and personal with their idols. There really is a festival atmosphere, both in the whole paddock and on the track. The Czech Truck Prix provides the perfect stage to showcase the industry and the teams. We are expecting uh, our friends, uh, partners, everybody who supports us, fans, and uh, this of course is a big responsibility and uh, we would like to make uh, of course good result and uh, although the uh, hospitality service to our partners which we are building here, much bigger structure than any other race, uh, we will be hosting more or less 500 uh, people every day, so it's kind of a big event as well. The Czech truck racing team causes a stir in the paddock with a very special installation. On Sunday, the first starting row features Hahn against Latsko again. The Bagheera driver is surely impressed by his opponent's qualifying times. In the time practice in the Super Bowl, Johan is very, very fast. He, he gets really fast time. I, I don't remember when I drive this time here. Yeah. But it's really nice and I think in front of us it's a really nice race and we will see on the finish. On the next row, Janek is next to Halm. One row further and Kurba is beside Lentz. Yuri Foreman and Ryan Smith are in 7th and 8th positions respectively. Grey clouds gather over the autodrome while the first umbrellas are opened. The rain Latsko was expecting has reached the racetrack. The race starts and Hahn pulls away, asserting his lead. In the first chicane, Halm runs into Latsko, damaging both their bumpers before dropping back again. Hahn is at the limit and makes a braking error. The rain gets heavier. Unfazed, Hahn extends his lead. René Reinert is playing catch-up after starting in 10th place. He was third in qualifying, but his time was disqualified because he exceeded the maximum speed. After overtaking Sasha Lentz, he moves into 6th place. The rain is getting even heavier, and Hahn opens the gap wider back to Latsko, who also has empty space behind him. This makes it even tighter for the foursome of Janek, Halm, Kerber and Reinert. The asphalt is getting slippery in places. Anthony Janek is having big problems. He has to let Halm pass and finds himself off the track again. Reinert, Kerber and Kish also pass the Frenchman. There's an internal struggle within the Reinert adventure team. Halm falters a little due to the track conditions, and René Reinert uses the gap to move up to third place. Gert Kurber uses the opportunity to move alongside Halm, who has no more track space, as they move onto the home straight. This costs the track two penalty markers and the saleswoman two places. At the front, Halm can already relax a little. The stopwatch clearly shows his lead of more than 10 seconds. No one can stop him now. He's having a practically faultless race. This means a clear victory for Jochen Hahn.
do a lot of things yesterday evening. We, we analyze why the performance in the race is so bad. And yes, we found a little bit, but we don't know it before the race. So we, we, we use the same um, setup for the time practice and we go back to the new setup for the race. It's the first time I use it and it works well, for sure, in these conditions. Maybe we'll learn now for a little bit wet conditions. Latsko loses more points to his opponent and René Reinert's accomplishment in moving up to the podium from 10th place is undeniable. Lap by lap I could mm -hmm. overtake a lot of guys and at the end I was on the third place and I, I'm, now I'm really happy. The final results put Kerber into fourth ahead of Kish. Sixth place goes to Steffi Halm. Seventh and eighth, Sasha Lentz and Yeri Foreman who will form the first row of the grid for the final race here in Most. The sky clears again before the fourth race and everything looks set for a race without rain. Yeri Foreman is in pole position and more than a little excitement for him is spreading among the home audience. The star will be the, the, the most important thing in that race because I'm probably the same speed with Sasha so we will see who will be first in the, in the, in the first corner and you know obviously it, I would like to be there first and then, you know, just make some gap and, and, and we all see what's happen next then. Lentz is beside Foreman. Then come Kish, Halm, Kurba and Reinert. The final act of the duel for the championship takes place in Most in the fourth starting row. Latsko has the inside position with Hahn at a disadvantage on the outside. At the start, Foreman gets away well and stays in the lead. Behind him, trucks touch each other, as so often happens in the tussle at the start. While Foreman and Lentz come through the first corner well, there are several collisions in the chicane. Hahn manages to pass Latsko to move up to seventh place. Meanwhile, Kish and Halm are at loggerheads. The reigning champion from Hungary forces the German driver into the gravel. Foreman and Lentz are at the front, leaving only a small gap to their pursuers. Jochen Hahn, meanwhile, is moving up. René Reinert, ahead of him, defends his position at first before eventually accepting defeat. Hahn moves up to fifth place after three laps. Latsko is also trying to pass Reinert. But the logistics entrepreneur from Schleifer refuses to give in. One lap later, and the tide has turned. Latsko finds a way past Reinert, and Janek also improves his position. But the duel is not over yet. Reinert's counter attack ends in the gravel for Janek. Reinert also skids off the track moments later. Get Korbert is overtaken by Hahn and Kish. Latsko also passes him. Hahn fills Lentz's rear view mirror. Hahn makes short work of him and edges into third place. Latsko appears behind Lentz, when at the front, Yeri Foreman is involved in a big drama. In the lead and at his home Grand Prix, the Bagheera Freightliner driver's brake disc explodes. It's all over for him. Jochen Hahn, therefore, takes the lead on lap eight. Now Adam Latsko is the only one left who can claim a home victory. But Lentz and Hahn, who absolutely do not want to give up their positions, are in his way. Latsko appears in Lentz's rear view mirrors. However, on the straight, he has to keep back. Latsko only gets alongside in the chicane where he has a better line and moves past into second place. Less than three laps remain for the Czech driver to turn the race around in his favour. Hahn is still within reach, and in fact, Latsko is catching up. But however much he puts his foot down, it is not enough. Hahn gains his second victory of the day ahead of Latsko and Lentz. At the final champagne shower, Hahn looks satisfied. A glance at the final results reveal Kish in fourth ahead of Janek with Reinert, Hahn and Lohr behind them. Like this, we win the first race. In the second race, we have a lot of luck on the start, and we have a lot of luck before. I don't know, everybody is nervous about Adam and me, or I don't know why everybody have make mistakes. 
Um, and we can easily overtake and I'm, I win and Adam is second and very happy for Sasha, first time on podium on the third place. So, no, I'm very happy with the weekend. Sasha Lentz is delighted to be on the podium for the first time. I'm very happy for my team. Uh, for me, it's perfect, this last race here, most. Here are the standings after the sixth race weekend. Jochen Hahn is in the lead and still by 13 point margin. It seems to be a lucky number for him as well. Norbert Kirsch is in third place behind Let's Go, a clear distance from the leading duo. René Reinert, Anthony Janek and Steffi Halm are all still within striking distance of third place. After a riveting race weekend in Most, the fans leave the track. But only two weeks later, the European Truck Racing Championship will continue at the Belgian circuit of Zolder.